Howdy. In this video, um, I want to give a quick refresher on solving quadratics. Okay, so to talk through a few different methods um, and yeah, what's the best, when can you use what and that sort of thing. So I have this chart um, and there's four methods that I want to talk about. I'm assuming that you've been solving quadratics since Algebra 1 and now you're either in my pre-cal or my IB class and I expect you to be an expert at it. So I'm going to teach it like you've never seen it but a whole lot faster. Okay, so the first thing is I wish that you were in my class to see us um, to do the cheer. Um, maybe I'll make a, I don't know that I want a video of me doing the cheer, but the idea with the cheer is that we go, um, we, it's square root, square root, plus minus, and so we do our arms like a square root sign on one side, we switch to the other side, and then we do our arms like a plus and then a minus sign. Um, I'll have to see, I'll, I, I'm happy to do it for you in the classroom. Doing it for you in a video and posting it for the whole world to see makes me nervous, but anyway. Um, so, we'll see. Maybe I'll find the, um, the, the boldness or whatever, so, or maybe I can find a former student who's willing to do it for me. Um, so when is this method best? Um, it's any time that I've got something squared is equal to something, okay? Um, so then I can just square root, square root, plus minus. Um, so will this method work every time? Sort of. Um, it's the last step to completing the square, okay? So if you're... Um, we think of doing the cheer when it's kind of standing on its own, but it's also the, the end part of completing the square. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, the examples that um, I have x squared equals 25. Okay, if I want to solve that, I can go square root, square root, plus minus, and I have that x is equal to plus or minus 5. Um, another example might be, okay, they give me x squared minus 81 equals 0. Well, I could factor, I could use a quadratic formula, um, but the easier thing to do is just to get x squared by itself, and now you can do the cheer again. Square root, square root, plus minus. So I have x is equal to plus or minus 9. Another example um, that I think I put in the answer key, um, I'm going to switch to back real fast. I, this one is on the answer key. I said x minus 2 squared sorry, is equal to, what did I, I'm trying to match the answer key that I made years ago. Um, so on this one, I'm going to do square root, square root, plus minus. Um, you may remember, so this gives me x minus 2 is equal to, let's clean this up. Um, it's just, yeah, this, this is 25 times 2. Hopefully, well, okay, one way to do it is to divide by primes, prime, that goes in here, there's, um, and I like to say, you do the birthday candle. When I taught, like, on-level geometry, this is what we would do. We would look for pairs. If you have a pair, if you have a date, then you get to go out. If you don't, you have to stay home under the radical sign. And it's a birthday cake, because here's your candle at the top. Okay, sorry, all of my silly little tricks all at the same time. So this, hopefully you know, is 5 root 2. And now all we need to do is solve for x is add 2 to both sides. And so we get x is equal to 2 plus or minus 5 root 2. Okay, so those are examples of when you would use the cheer. We just go square root, square root, square root, square root, plus minus. Okay, so factoring, um, I like to factor when it's easy to factor and when it's straightforward. I think that's, a, that's an easy, the, the idea is that you get down to x minus a times x minus b is equal to zero, and therefore x would equal a or b. Okay, um, so when do I factor? Well, when I can. Um, everything can be factored, but it doesn't always factor over the real numbers um, or the rational numbers. We will talk about that more um, in HL and in pre-cal, not so much in SL, but we'll talk about that when we get to polynomials. Um, so the example that, um, that I gave was x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. Okay, if I have something like that, this factors down to x plus 4 times x plus 2 equals 0. Therefore, x equals subtract 4, negative 4, subtract 2, negative 2. Um, if I went too fast, then we need to go back and practice our factoring, okay? Um, I'm assuming by the time that you're in pre or IB math that this is pretty straightforward. Um, I also think that when it's pretty when it's when it's like this where this a value out in front is just a one, this should be something that you can factor um, with guess and check. Now you don't have to, and I'll show you my favorite method for factoring in just a second. Um, the other example I gave was um, six x squared plus five x minus four equals zero. Um, 
So this one's a little more complicated. It does factor, um, but when like on this one, well, let me let me show you. So on this one with this with this method, I like my favorite. After 20 years of teaching math, my favorite method is to split the middle term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these two out on the outside. So that's negative 24. I don't know where I'm going to write that. Negative 24. And then I want to find a pair that multiplies to give me that, that adds to give me this. Okay, so I can, you know, write out, well, negative 1 times 24 and negative 2 times 12 and negative 3 times 8. Oh, look, already, now there's more. I can say negative 4 times 6. Um, and then I can change which one's positive and negative. But notice I already found right here that negative 3 plus 8 is equal to a positive 5. So I will rewrite that middle term. Up equals zero. Um, and now I factor by grouping. Okay, and I discovered, um, I'm doing a whole lot in this video. So um, I discovered a couple years ago that my kids were coming from middle school with the wrong notation. So hopefully, so I sent, um, I sent an email to the powers that be and said, hey, 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 slow down, middle school teachers, don't teach them the wrong thing. Um, and what my point was, Okay, I don't know if they fixed it by the time it got to you, but what people would do is they would say, okay, 6x squared plus 5x minus 4 equals 0, and then my kids would, would split the middle term beautifully, and then, and then they would go, they would regroup this to factor out. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor out of the first two terms, we're going to factor out of the second two terms, or first two, last two, um, but then they would do, they would do something like this. And I'm like, no, 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 because this is saying you're multiplying this times that. And now if you notice, when I multiply right here, I'm getting an x cubed. Well, this original problem did not have an x cubed. So don't do that. So if you want to indicate that you're factoring out of the first two terms and then factoring out of the last two terms, fantastic. But don't use parentheses because they have a different meaning. And I wouldn't even, here with this, I know I'm being picky, but... But this becomes really important in IB math when they ask you to show something is true. You write, if you even write, like if you write this, we're still okay because we distribute a positive through. But had this been a negative right here, or even say this, say I had the exact same problem, I just switched the order, okay? This is exactly equivalent to that. If I, if I come along and say this, and I, and I say minus, and then I have this, or if I put a plus, I mean, this sign just makes it a little confusing. So don't use parentheses. Like if you try and say, oh, parentheses here, no, parentheses here, no, I'm sorry, that got a little chaotic. But my point is either do a little bracket or underline things for yourself, but the parentheses are bad notation, okay? It gets you in a bad habit. Okay, Back to the real problem. So I can factor out a 3x. That gives me 2x minus 1. I can factor out... Um, oh, I, here I go. Okay, time for me to get back my math brain back. Plus, I can factor out a 4 times 2x minus 1. And so now notice that both of these have a 2x minus 1. So I can factor that out. 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 4 equals 0. If I were to FOIL this out, let's check it real fast. This is 6x squared. Um, right here. This is um, 8x minus 3x. 8x minus 3x is 5x. This gives me negative 4. We're good to go. Therefore, x is equal to a positive 1 half or a subtract 4 divided by 3 or a negative 4 thirds. Okay, um, we are already, you know what, I'm going to keep going. Okay, so the next one, complete the square. What, what we're trying to do with completing the square is we're trying to get it to a point where we can do the cheer. Okay, we've started with um, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and we're trying to get it down to where we have something squared is equal to some mess over here. And now we can go square root, square root, plus minus. Um, so when is this method best? Well, it will always work. What I like to do, I like it when, um, when a is equal to one and b is even. It's ridiculously easy, okay? You can do it anytime, you can do it every time, but that is when it's really, really easy. Will it work every time? Yes. Um, you can check my answer key. Um, okay, so let me, I need more space, but let me do that one. Let me get another piece of paper. So matching the problem um, on my answer key, the first one will do two. I have x squared plus 4x 
uh, is equal to 1. Okay, so, or I could have said, it could have started here, x squared plus 4x minus 1 equals 0. Well, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have my x squared and my x term on one side and everything else moves to the other. What I like to do, this is not the only way to do it, but what I like to do is I like to say plus a box. Um, well, if I add a box to this side, I have to add a box to that side. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm, my goal is to get it down to something squared is equal to something over here, right? Well, in order for this to be a, a, um, a perfect square, perfect square trinomial, what I need is I need a x plus a. If I expand that out, you may remember that this is x squared plus 2 um, to a x plus a squared. Okay, or maybe that's not how we normally write it. Okay, hang on. What we normally do is we say a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, if this doesn't come naturally to you, then I would go into your bathroom and take a dry erase marker and write that on the mirror so that that just becomes part of the air you breathe, that you're really familiar with this sort of thing. You need to spot... You need to go from here to here. You also need to be able to go from this back to that. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to get turn this into, I'm trying to make this part here turn into this. Notice um, what I want is this middle term. I need half of it to go right here. Okay. Oh, you couldn't see all that I was doing. But basically, okay, so we're going to say x plus half of 4 is 2. And then I say 2 squared goes in my box. So this becomes a 4. But if a 4 goes here, a 4 goes there. So this is equal to 5. Now I'm ready to do the cheer. I thought I'd change it up a little bit. Square root, square root, plus minus. And I have that x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus root 5. I need to get rid of this 2 to solve for x. x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus root 5. Okay, that was one of the examples on the, on the worksheet that I gave you. The other one was a little bit more involved. 3x squared plus 15x equals 2. Two. Okay, on this one, notice it doesn't have a 1 in front of the x squared. It's got a 3. So I have to factor that out. Um, I don't choose to factor it out of this term, ever. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 3 times, well, x squared plus 5x plus a box. So then is equal to 2 plus, well, notice this is not just plus a box on this side. This is 3 times that box. So plus 3 box. Well, this is not my favorite one to do. I think I was trying to pick a gross problem because um, it doesn't meet either of my, my, when do I like to do it? When A is equal to 1 or B and B is even. Well, A wasn't equal to 1, and then when I factor it out, B is not even, which is annoying. But okay, let's push through and, and do this trickier problem. Um, okay, so this becomes 3 times x plus half of this is 5 halves. And I would encourage you, don't be afraid of fractions. Okay, fractions are your friend, especially in this problem. This squared, so 5 squared is 25. 2 squared is 4, so this becomes 25 over 4. Okay, so now, oops, sorry, I'm writing all over the place. This becomes, well, that doesn't clean up nicely. This is, 2 is 8 fourths. Um, plus this becomes 75 fourths. Mm, lovely. Oh, sorry, you couldn't see that. Um, and that, so, so when I add those together, where are we? 83 fourths? Ugh, gross. Is that what I got before? Yeah. Okay, and so now I need to get this by itself, this, this piece right here all alone so I can do the cheer, which means I need to get rid of this 3. So I'm, I've already got a fraction over here. I can divide by 3, but it makes more sense to me to multiply by a third. It's just something I, like, I can see it a little more clearly. And so now I have x plus 5 halves squared is equal to 83 over 12. Oh, lovely. Okay, so square root, square root, plus minus, and I have x plus 5 halves is equal to the square root, well, plus or minus, the square root of 83 over the square root of 12. I probably should rationalize that denominator. Um, okay, what, how did I finish it on the answer key? Oh, I didn't quite finish it. I, I, I mean, I should. It's not thrilling, so I'm not sure if I'm going to. Well, so this is negative 5 halves um, plus or minus... Well, square root of 83 over this becomes 2 root 3. If I rationalize the denominator, then I would multiply the top and the bottom by 
um, root 3 over root 3. Does that go in nicely? Well, you know what? I'm cheating. Well, I'm utilizing my resources. If I have, what is the square root of 83 over 12? Ah, okay. Oops, sorry, you couldn't see it. Yay for the calculator. Okay, so this becomes x is equal to negative 5 halves plus or minus the square root of 249 all over 6. And there you go. Okay, we're almost there. Um, the last one, the last one is a quadratic formula. I am not going to show you where the quadratic formula comes from because I might already have a video on that. And if not, this it will make this video too long. So I'm going to go back and look and see um, if I have a video showing you where we get the quadratic formula. If not, I will make one. Um, but the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, you're welcome. I sang for you. Um, so, you, anyway, learn the song or don't learn the song, but it, it, it does help me remember it. Um, so if I have the example, this yes, this will always work, but I find this tedious. So if I have something that factors, then I'm going to do that. If I have something that A is equal to 1 and this is and, and B is even, I'm going to complete the square. It's only when I'm like, ah, oh, yuck, this is just gross, that I actually go and use the quadratic formula. Um, but does it work every time? Well, yes, it does. Um, you have to pay attention, like on this one over here, the this would have been x squared minus 25 equals 0. And so a would equal 1, b would equal 0, and c would equal negative 25. But you could still plug that mess into this here. Um, the example I gave, 3x squared plus 5x, what? Oh, I have a type, or I wrote something wrong on my answer key. I'm so sorry. Um, that I, on the problem that I put on my answer key that has a square, that's that's silly. I didn't mean to do that. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I'm good, but I'm not perfect, so I apologize in advance. Okay, so x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, x equals, well, let's see if we can clean this up. I'll stop singing. Plus or minus, what is this? Um, well... Uh, there are definitely times in both pre-cal and IB that I'm going to give you a calculator and times that I'm not, So, um, but I don't really feel like thinking through this. This, a negative times a negative becomes a positive, and I'm too lazy to type that in. That's 12 times 7. There we go. Okay, so plus or minus 109 over 6. Is that what I wrote down? It is. Okay, fantastic. So hopefully that's clear. I'm going to go look and put. A, I'll put a link to... Um, how, where this comes from, or I'm going to go make another video. So good luck to you. Practice, practice, practice. Hopefully, I know this was a lot. I know this was fast, but you've also been solving quadratic equations for at least three or four years before you come to my classroom. So, um, and if you haven't been, well, then come see me and I'll give you more practice. But um, that, that's my expectation and that's why I went so quickly. All right, good luck.